Psalm 24, go there in your Bible, amen and amen, heart for the house in Spanish, corazón para la casa. Si está bien? Donde está el baño? Anyways, okay. Psalm 24, go to verse number one. We are in a series right now as a community called Steward Little. And we've been talking together about, well, as the Bible says, being faithful in small things so God can trust us with many things. So how you handle what you currently have today tells God whether he can trust you with more or not. And so, by the way, don't get your eyes on other people's stuff. Because there's always somebody that has more than you. And the saying is true, comparison is the thief of joy. So it doesn't matter what you have. God bless your Tesla X. I'm driving off in a Toyota Sienna. (laughs) Both doors open off buttons. Ball out, baby. Doesn't matter what you have. It matters what I have. And the stewardship of how I handle what God has placed in my possession. And God has given all of us, I love this proverb that says, the rich and the poor have this in common. God is watching both. So God is watching my life. God is watching how I steward. If you, if you feel like them lyrics, I always feel like somebody's watching me, you're right. God is watching your life. And you are signaling to him whether you can be trusted with more or not. By the way, the scripture goes on to say, if you can't be faithful with what you have right now, God will take it away and give it to one that can handle it. And so I need to be a good steward. Somebody say amen to that. Be a good steward in Jesus' name. Be a good steward. Steward little. I want to remind you that all of it is God's anyway. Psalm 24, verse number one. The earth is the Lord's. And all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein, everything belongs to God. So great news to me and you, I am not the owner, but I know the one that does. So I am a manager of what belongs to God. I'm just stewarding what belongs to somebody else. I want to preach a message today. Write down the title. Today's message is called, Who's the Boss? And I want to answer together that we unequivocally say, God is the boss. El jefe. I'm going to just vacillate between English and... I'm a big Spanglish guy. You guys get it. The one that is in charge is a man named Jesus. Jesus. The ruler over my life is God himself. And so I'm I'm grateful to have a boss. Anybody have a boss today? I have a boss. I have two bosses. My first boss's name is Julia. In Spanish, Julia, okay? My second boss, my second boss is Jesus. Jesus and Julia. That's who I report to, okay? But I want to encourage you, it's great to have authority. It's comforting to know there's somebody over you, someone that's in control of you, someone that you report to. It's not good for your soul to wander and wonder and try and make judgment calls yourself. I'm happy to have a boss. How about you? And sometimes I have to remind my soul and my money that I am not in control. God is in control. I'm going to give you four things to write down today. Write down number one. I love this thought. It all belongs to him. Job 41, verse 11. Everything under heaven, God says, belongs to me. God is so clear with this. Psalm 50, verse 10. For every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. So there's nothing that God's like, I own the house, but I don't own the land. Or I own the land, but I don't own the cattle. No, God says everything on the earth is mine. 
There's nothing in your life that you created or that you purchased in your own strength. Everything in your life has come from God's good hand. God has been faithful. God has been generous. God has been kind. God has been good. Everybody clap together if you agree with that. West Side, come on. So I might have a home and some clothes and some children, but it's... They make me laugh too, yes. But it all belongs to God. And, and there's a psychology, there's a psychology that teaches us most of us treat other people's stuff better than our own. There's something about our inferiority complex, there's something about your syndrome that thinks that you are not that good, you are better with other people's belongings then you are your own. Well, good news to you. Everything you have is not yours. Everything you have belongs to somebody else. In fact, today as we give an offering to God, watch what the Bible teaches us, First Chronicles. This is a beautiful scripture, verse 29. But who am I and who are my people that we could give you at Zoe Church anything to you? Everything we have has come from you. And we give you only what you first gave us. It's kind of like, you know, the other day we were, we were teaching our kids about tithing. So um, I put some of my money in an envelope for my boys, Winston's tithe, Maverick's tithe, and Clive's tithe. These guys come rocking up to church, the three amigos, ready to give their tithe. They're like, I got my tithe. In my head, I'm like, that's my money, <laughs> homie. Everything you have has come from God. He gave it to us first. The breath in your lungs, from God. The health in your body, from God. The creative idea you got today, from God. The talent you're living with, from God. The mind you're thinking with, from God. The time you're stewarding, from God. Anybody grateful that everything you got has come from a really, really good God? Come on, give him a praise today. But this is comforting and freeing of me just knowing I am not the owner, I am the steward. I'm managing what belongs to somebody else. I'll never forget when I took my father-in-law out to ask for Julia's hand in marriage. I was so nervous. I took him to his favorite restaurant, P.F. Chang's. We went out. I balled out, baby. I ordered everything on the menu. I'm fe Now, you have to understand, Julia's father played college football. So he played on the offensive. He's a lineman. So he looked like Fred Flintstone. And so, you know, your boy really, I only eat carrots and green beans, you know, so I'm just kind of chilling. But he's eating. He's in the midst of his meal. He's busy. And so we're eating. And finally, I muster up the courage to ask Mr. McGregor if I could have his firstborn, his, his firstborn's hand in marriage. I said, sir, I would like to ask permission to have your daughter's hand in marriage. He just kept eating. <laughs> he paused. He looked up finally. He said, you want to marry Julia? <clears throat> yes, sir. He goes, you want to marry Julia? <laughs> Feed her. I said, excuse me, sir, what? He said, yeah, feed her. She's hypoglycemic. She's massive. She doesn't eat, but yeah, you can have her. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I, did, I said, thank you. I think. But I, 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 I went to the father to ask for his daughter's hand in marriage. I recognize that there is an authority over her life. I wanted a blessing. You recognize that everything in your life, somebody else gave you and his name is G-O-D. God has given you all the money you have. God has given you the place of shelter. God has put clothes on your back. God has given you the job that you have. God has given you the friendships and relationships. God has given you the name that you got. I think we got to clap a little bit louder and thank God for his great. Come on, give him a praise of gratitude today. It all belongs to him. 
And so the more I recognize that, the better I understand that God is trying to teach me how to handle life the right way, which is the way of generosity. In fact, write down number two, God is changing me to become generous, just like him. So God, just so you know, God is changing you. The Bible says you were, we are being changed from glory to glory into the image of his son. So God is changing you from one moment to another, a, a moment of worship, a moment of breakthrough, a moment of clarity, a moment of repentance, a moment of wisdom. God is changing you from one Jesus moment to another Jesus moment to look more and more like Jesus. God is not trying to make you look like your parents. God is not trying to make you look like a pastor. God is trying to make you look like Jesus. And the Bible says in the book of Galatians that God's going to keep on working on us until Christ is formed in us. And so the more I hang around Jesus, the more generous I become. The more I hang around God, the more generous I become. How did you get to be kind? I hung around God. He's really kind. How did you get to be faithful in your marriage? I hung around God. He's a faithful God. How did you learn compassion? I was hanging out with Jesus. He's the author of compassion. How did you get to be generous? I hung out with Jesus. I learned what generosity looked like. John 3, 16, put it on the screen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and his only son. How do we know that God loves us? He gave to us. How do you know if somebody loves you if they don't give to you? And so God, you are most like Jesus when you're giving. Remember, you were born selfish. You were born again generous. You were born and your first words out of your mouth were mine. <laughs> and the moment you got saved, you said to God, yours. Because you're born selfish, but you're born again generous. And the more you hang out with God, be careful who you hang out with. You are becoming who you hang out with. I saw uh, uh, an article recently and it was talking about if you want to become a better communicator, Hang out with better communicators because right now you talk like the top five people you hang out with. And so if you want better speech, better words, if you want to say better things, you want to say it in a better way, hang out with people that communicate effectively and you'll become a better communicator. Let me remind you today, you are who you hang with. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future, your future. If you want to become generous, hang out with God. He's generous. What kind of generosity does God deal with? God deals in ways of generosity that don't make sense. God's generosity is crazy. God's generosity is not logical. In fact, Jesus tells this one story. It's so great. He said there's this guy that goes out in the morning time and he hires some workers. And he goes out and he says, guys, I want you to work for the day. I'm willing to pay this wage for the day. And the guys are like, sounds good. Sounds, that's a good wage. They go to work. Middle of the afternoon, he goes out and he finds some other guys. He says, guys, I'd like to hire you to come work for me. I'm willing to pay this wage, same wage. He said, will you come and work the rest of the day? They said, that sounds like a great wage, especially considering the hour of the day. And they came and they worked. At the end of the day, almost when it was closing time, he found some more workers and he hired them at the same wage of the first group. He said, will you, will you come work for this? It's not a lot of time left. Will you come? They were like, absolutely. So they came, and when the shift was over, he paid everyone the same lump. Now, the first group, as they should, got upset. And they said, wait a second. We've been here since the morning, and they just showed up 30 minutes ago, and it's not fair that they get paid what we get paid. Watch what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20. He says, don't I have the right to do what I want with what I own in my money? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the problem with God's generosity is it will mess you up because God will start blessing people that you don't think should get a blessing. And you say, hold on, God, you done messed up. <laughs> Every time God blesses me, I'm like, you got it right. <laughs> Nailed it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> seen it coming. I got to be honest, seen it coming. When God bless other people, I'm like, we need to talk. Um, 
I don't think you know those guys that well, do you? God's gener generosity doesn't make sense. God's generosity is not logical. How would, why in the world, why in the world would you give your one and your only son to a group that could reject you? That doesn't make sense. But God is benevolent beyond our understanding. That's why it says his ways are above your ways and his thoughts are above your thoughts. God does not reason the way that you reason. He goes, don't, don't, don't worry about it. If I want to be generous to this group, what is it to you? I'm thankful today that the more I hang out with God, God starts talking to me about being generous in ways that the rest of my family would think I'm crazy. You're going to serve how many hours on a Sunday? You're going to, you're going to work for the church and serve and not get paid for that? Hold on. You're giving how much money annually? To the house of God, isn't it my money? Don't be envious because I'm generous. The more I hang out with God, the more he makes me generous. Amen to that? Come on, clap if you're grateful for it. Put it up on the screen. Generous people are generous because they don't hold on to anything too tightly. Whether it's money or status, it is all about the posture and the condition of our heart. Don't hold on to your status, by the way. When you get to heaven, there's not like early boarding, group one boarding. I'm tired of group one boarding. I just come up anyways and be real sweet to the attendant, and she doesn't look at my thing. Just I just want to get on the plane. I'm not trying to check a bag. Somebody say amen. There's no status in heaven. There's only sons and daughters of the Most High God. That's my status. I'm loved, chosen, and graced by God. Give them a praise if that's your status today. And you got to be careful because you'll never step into generosity if you're worshiping idols. If you worship God, you'll become like God. If you worship stuff, you'll become like stuff. You become whatever you praise. Whatever you exalt in your life, you're becoming. Whoever you follow in your life, you're becoming. Whatever you think is a big deal in your life, you're becoming. Whatever is worshiped by your soul, you are becoming. That's why God said, do not have any other gods in front of me. Because you'll become like them. Look at this scripture. Oh, you can't make this up. Psalm 135. The idols of the nations are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. Eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. Nor is there breath in their mouths. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Those who make these idols, they will become like these idols. And those who trust in these idols will become like these idols. You get to choose your idols wisely. So I have made God my idol. I have made his son my idol. I have made his spirit my idol. And I'm going to become like the father. Clap today. The son. Clap a little bit louder. And the spirit in my life. Give him a praise if that's who you want to become like. So the more I hang out with Jesus the more I become like Jesus. You sound like Jesus. You look like Jesus. You talk like Jesus. How did you become like Jesus? I will spend a lot of time with him. Yeah, but I remember, I remember you used to be a knucklehead. Well, I still am. But I've made my idol God. And he's making me more and more like him. Generous. Generous. Amen. And so, and so the enemy knows this. And so because the enemy knows this, he does everything in his power to keep you away from God. And the way he keeps you away from God is by wounding your heart. In fact, Jesus said, and this is our theme scripture for our church, John chapter 10, verse 10. This is all over our merch. This is all over our website. If you want to know what Zoe is about, it's this scripture. Jesus says in John 10, 10, the evil one has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The abundant life is found in Jesus, but the wicked one comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he comes to hurt our heart because write down number three, put, this, put it on the screen. A wounded heart 
means I'll live with a closed fist. The more my heart gets wounded, the more my fist gets closed. And if I'm offended, I'm creased, I'm bitter, I'm jaded, I'm cynical, I'm upset. The more I'm wounded, the more closed my fist. Let's play law of opposite. The more he touches my heart, the more open my hand. The more he touches me and loves me and showers me and forgives me and heals me, the more he touches my heart, the more my, my hand just gets open. With, has this been true for you? You're in a worship service or you're in a moment with God or you're reading the Bible or you're listening to a message and God touches your heart and you just go, Lord, you can have it all. And so God touches your heart because it opens your hand. Lord, you are the owner. You are the boss. You are the idol. You are in control. It all belongs to you. Don't let me be selfish. Here it is, God. Oh, I love that story about Jesus when he was going to, about to go to the cross and he's getting ready for the Last Supper and all of a sudden this lady who her heart had been touched, she comes to Jesus and she's got this jar. Watch, watch what it says. Read it on the screen here. It says that, 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 that Jesus, um, Matthew 26, when Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. And when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why, why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given the poor. They say, why, 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 why this extravagant, this expensive perfume? You know why? Because her heart had been touched. She had to give Jesus something. And the rest of the people say, it don't make sense. But when you've been touched by God, generosity doesn't make sense. You'll start giving to God things that everybody else goes, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Give them the crypto. <laughs> Give them the Sheba. Give them the doigies. Give them the little Bitcoin that so-and-so just gave away for free, but don't give them the. And she said, you know, you don't understand. He touched my heart. It opened my hand. He changed my life. How could I keep the perfect? the expensive stuff away from my God. That's why the Bible says whoever has been forgiven much will love much. If you ever see somebody in the middle of church and you look over during Zoe worship and the worship team's playing and you see someone lost in the sauce, <laughs> just, just, just note in your head, they've been through something and God has been so good, he brought them out of something and they got a reason to worship. You ever see somebody during worship and they just alligator arms? They ain't got no testimony. You see someone in church, they carrying a plasma? They ain't got no testimony. But lost in the sauce, they been through something. Because if you've been forgiven much, you love much. If he touches your heart, you open your hand. You understand? There's this one time Jesus is walking down the road and he sees this guy in the tree. He's a thug. He's a punk. He's a robber. He's a thief. He's a, he's a nasty man. His name is Zacchaeus. And he's a short man. He's a wee little man. And, and he had to climb this tree. He had to get up on his lifted truck because, <laughs> come on, and, and because he couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd. That was just for me. That was for me. I don't know if you thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. And he climbs up this tree and Jesus walking with all the church people and all the crowd. He sees Zacchaeus and he says, Zacchaeus, he knows his name. By the way, God knows your name. God knows how many hairs are on your head. He says, Zacchaeus, get down. I got to go to your house today because God's not ashamed of being associated with you. And he goes to his home and he says to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to you. And his heart was so moved. Watch what Zacchaeus says back to Jesus. Put up on the screen, Luke. But Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Hold on. You're telling me the guy that was robbing people two hours ago is now being generous. Yeah, because when he touches your heart. 
your heart's open. We just had the gala a couple weeks ago, the Zoe Gala. By the way, I'm proud to announce that we raised four missions, over $200,000 that night. Could we clap and thank God? That was, that's just the missions. And I, I had to go see um, uh, my dentist. My dentist is here at Zoe. He's in our church. And I had to go see our dentist. And so I was under the chair. I was in the chair, you know. And, um, and so I was talking. You ever try and talk to your dentist while you're, you know, your things are going on? And so he's asking me, how you doing? Cry, huh, God, you know. <laughs> and we're having a conversation. And he's asking me, you know, and, and we're trying to talk. And, and he says, hey, I saw that um, Zoe has a gala coming up. And I was like, uh -huh. and, 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 and I told him, yeah, yes, I got. <laughs> I was trying to convince him, you know, that he should come. And I looked over and he started to cry. And I could just tell this is a moment. This is a Jesus moment. And I, I, I tried to tell him, you know, the stuff in my mouth. No, you should come. And he, and he, he stopped working. He slid, slid his little stool away. He started to cry. And he, he started saying, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. He told his assistant how much he wanted to give. And he, God just started to touch his heart. He said, I'm, I'm going to give this much. In fact, he texted me this week a screenshot of him wiring more money to the church this week because his heart was so moved by what Zoe's doing. I'm telling you, when he touches your heart, your hand goes like this. And the enemy knows it. So what is he always doing? Offense, bitterness hurt, frustration, because if your heart is wounded, your fist is closed. So he breaks up marriages and relationship and family and friendship and churches because the fist. And guess what? When our fist is closed, the church has no resource. The church can make no impact. And so the enemy goes, I'll stop the church real fast. I'll just get everybody to have a bad heart. You understand how important this is? Because when, my, when, when God gets free access to my heart, just boom, impact, flow of the kingdom, legacy. I just got back from, I was, this last week I was in the Dominican Republic. One of our sponsors, our partners that you saw in the video, one of our partners, Compassion, is doing great work in the Dominican Republic. So I got to go with the group to see what they're doing there and spend a couple days on the ground. And one of the days I was in a neighborhood where only 7% of the homes have a father that live in the house. Their average income weekly per household is $127 per week. And so we got to go to one of these uh, churches. It, it, was, it had a school and a church in the same building. And the school was done and they did a great job with the school. And the kids were so, it, it just reminded me, you don't need money to be happy. These are the most joyful kids I ever met, and then they got no money. You don't need money for you to have joy. And so I was impacted, and I was moved, and, and, they, and they showed us this great school, and we met the kids, and we go up to this top level, and they're believing. They're showing us the plans of them trying to renovate and, and build a church at the top floor. So school on the bottom, and then the church at the top, and, and we got a chance to pray with them that God will give them the resources to finish this project. Show them the photos. We got to pray as a group and just believe God they're going to get the money to build the project. So that night at dinner, that night at dinner, I was sitting next to the leader. Come on, that's awesome, right? That night at the dinner, I'll sit next to the leader and I, I leaned over and said, hey, how much did they say it would cost to finish the project? And he said, well, it's $70,000 to complete the, the, the project. And so I looked down the table, I was like, we could do 70 tonight right here. And so uh, another guy, we kind of triggered on the conversation. We said, hey, let's raise the 70 right now. And I'm happy to report that just in this table, we were able to raise the $70,000 to help them complete the job. And Zoe Church gave $10,000. Come on, clap if you're excited to be generous. But my heart was touched and my hand was open. Don't let the enemy get you creased and bent out of shape and wounded and upset and frustrated and jaded and weird. You ever meet somebody that went weird? I don't want to, I, I, we got to stop blaming your weirdness on COVID. That was four years ago, homie. You just weird now. I'm 
tired of people being like, that's COVID. Fam. <laughs> Mariah Carey sang three years of Christmas things besides that. Come on, man. You just weird now. I'm kidding you. I'm getting old. But the more he touches my heart, the more open my hand. Worship team, come join me. Let me give you one more thing to write down to encourage you today. Write down number four. The better I steward, the more generous I can be. The better I steward, the more generous I can be. If I'm a good steward of what God has placed in my life, this is the great thing about being a good steward, watching your money, having a budget. By the way, the word budge is in the word budget because you're not supposed to budge on your budget. So many people look down right there. <laughs> Assign your dollars. Tell your money where to go. Or it'll go anywhere it wants. Proverbs says money has wings like an eagle. It flies away. Assign your money. The better steward I am, the more generous I could be. Every dollar matters in God's kingdom. Because why? It's his money. When I get my money, I'm not going like, look at my money. I'm like, look at your money. What do you want me to do? It's yours. It's all yours. You can talk to me about your stuff. My talent has been given to me by you and my time is a gift from you and my treasure is a gift from you and I want to be a good steward because there ain't nothing like being generous. There's no feeling in the world. In fact, it's crazy. I saw a clip by Denzel Washington the other day. He said the most selfish thing you could do in the whole world is be generous. Because when you give, you feel so good. There ain't nothing better than being generous. In fact, who's blessed? The church and the DR or us? We are blessed because it's more blessed to give than it is to what? Receive. So we're the one that's blessed. And I'm telling you, you ain't living till you start giving. And the moment you start giving, God will start blessing. That's why the Bible teaches us the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. So let me ask you, do you want a really big world or a really small one? Because if you want a big world, you got to have a big soul. you got to have a big heart. you got to have a big mind. you got to give a lot of compliments and give a lot of resources and a lot of time. Because the more generous you are, God will show up and God will show off. And he'll trust you with more than you ever asked, thought, or imagined. Who am I preaching to today that wants to be a little bit more generous? You weren't called to live in that little small world with your little small group and that little small thinking and that little small soul. You're called to live a generous life. It's crazy about generosity. Proverbs 11, put on the screen. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should have given and only suffers want. How in the world can you give and get more? Because that's how God works. One gives freely and grows richer? Wait a second. I thought that if I gave, I'd lose. No, no, in God's kingdom, the more you give, the more he blesses you. One gives freely and grows richer? <laughs> it says literally, if those who sow generously will reap generously and those that sow stingily, they reap just a stingy little harvest. And I want to encourage you don't sow what you could. Sow what you should. Amen. I close with this today. I, I was in uh, London a few years ago, and I got to be the guest preacher at a church in London on their offering Sunday, their miracle heart for the house Sunday. What an honor. And the youth pastor kind of couple got up, heart for the house Sunday, and they told their testimony. And the guy said, last year, uh, this Sunday, our heart was touched and our hand was open, but we had nothing to give. And we felt so bad because we looked at each other and we had been such bad stewards of our finances that we didn't have any money to give in the offering. So we made a commitment last year at Heart for the House that this year at Heart for the House, we would have something to give. 
So we're proud to announce that for the last year, we've set a little aside the whole year so that we could come to this Sunday having saved up to bring an offering at Heart for the House Sunday. The church went nuts. And as they're telling their story, they said, we're happy that this year at Heart for the House, we have something to give. And I'm sitting on the side stage and I started to get emotional of just thinking, wow, that's what it's, that's what, that's success. Success is not just this sudden moment. Yeah, oh, I'm led. $10,000, yeah. Uh, no, it's about everyday stewardship, which allows me to be in positions to be generous. And the more you walk in generosity, the less regrets you have. Do you think for one second that the guy that was the good Samaritan in the Bible came back home a week later to his family and was like, I am so upset, I just can't believe it. We just took care of this guy's bills for a month and we took care of his medical bills and his hotel and I just, I'm living in a world of regret. No way. Because generosity is the greatest privilege on the planet. And the more you give, the more you give, the more you give, the more it pleases the heart of God because you are just like Jesus when you are generous. Amen? Bow your heads. Jesus.